Hi everyone, so this is going to be kind of a reading guide to Shauna McGuire's The Waver Children series. There are currently six books and a short story out, and I believe currently she has been commissioned to write three more. The next one comes out in January. I finished the last three in March, and so instead of doing a wrap-up, I thought I'd do a guide on which books you can read as standalones, what order is best to read the books, if you didn't want to read all of them, what are kind of some books that have the same storyline, and my overall thoughts on all of the books that are out so far. I have not read the short story, so that is the only thing I'm not going to talk about. The first book is Every Heart a Doorway, and this book is the one that I have given five stars to. It is absolutely perfect in every way. I do think I wish for a different ending. I'm not going to spoil it, but I do wish things had been slightly different. Um, there's a bit of a mystery, but essentially this whole series is about kids who don't feel at home in our world. So they go to portal fantasies such as walking through a, a wardrobe and entering Narnia, and then they come back and they have to retransition into life. And this particular home is an accepting home and a boarding school that helps them retransition into life without talking to them like they're crazy and they've never been there. And there they meet other people who have similar experiences. And it was just heartwarming. And I love the message of acceptance and being true to yourself and the healing that comes after traumatic events. The next one we have is Down Among the Sticks and Bones. This one follows Jack and Jill from the first uh, novel. However, this can also be read as a standalone. And if you're going to read the series as a whole, you can read this before Every Heart of Doorway or after. I don't think it makes a big difference. But this follows Jack and Jill. And the main focus in this to me was gender uh, roles in society and whether or not we really need them or if they're good or should we have gender stereotypes. And for those of you who like vampires and mad scientists, both are in there. And I gave this one four stars. And the reason I gave this four stars is because I thought the pacing at the beginning of the novel was just a bit slow but this is very much a dark tale. So if you're not into dark tales, maybe skip this. The next book is Beneath the Sugar Sky. This follows Sumi. Um, well, you go to Sumi's world from the first book. You also visit another world in this book. I gave this book two stars. One, the ending thoroughly ticked me off. Um, I highly recommend skipping the last chapter or even just like the last two or three pages, I felt like the decision was unnecessary. It was harmful to readers um, who struggle with mental illness, um, particularly any those who have um, thoughts of maybe no longer wanting to live. Um, it was very poor choices by the author, in my opinion. Um, I know some people have read it and interpreted it differently, but that really left a bad taste in my mouth for this particular book. It also did something um, that I don't like when um, books do. And if you're going to make a decision in terms of life or death, I think that needs to be finalized. When you, when there are possible resurrections or just kiddings or that kind of thing, I feel it doesn't allow you to connect with the characters because you never know if it's going to be final. And it felt like we went from world to world a bit too much because it was a quest story. And I felt like it would have been better just staying in one world for a particular period of time. And this was the most preachy out of the book. It was about body. It was very preachy in terms of body positivity and while I don't believe in fat shaming, um, I'm overweight myself, actually, like, clinically classified as obese. Going over and over saying that fat people are healthy and things like that, that A, that's not helpful to anyone. And B, I think you can show body positivity and loving yourself in your own skin without trying to discount medical advice. I just... She could have gone over like how being fat doesn't make you lazy, how 
overeating and things like that can be due to medical conditions or can be linked to mental health. And there are so many things that she could have tied into that that wasn't. So to me, this book was a missed opportunity. However, if you're planning to read all of the stories, I do feel particularly um, for the fifth book. So, so far, the odd number of books have followed in the same timeline and progression. And so books one, three, and five, you do need to read in that specific order. So if you're going to read book five, you need to read book three. Just recommend maybe skipping that last chapter or the last couple of scenes. The fourth book is In an Absent Dream. I gave this four stars. Mainly, I don't know if I couldn't get into the book because of the bad taste that the third book left. Because I do think this is one that if I reread, I might give a five stars. But the whole crux of the novel is what is fair value. And what fair value is to to me might not be fair value to somebody who's only got five dollars left in their pocket and they're trying to figure out how to put meals on the table for people accepting of people for who they are how two people can share a similar experience and yet have very different memories of those experiences I found this world to be the most intriguing world that we've seen so far. I found it to be the most well done. Oh, the ending. The ending was great. Um, and I loved getting to see Lundy's um, world and background. This is another one that is a standalone. You don't have to read any other book in the series. You can start here. And this is, besides the first one, I would say this is probably the second most liked book overall in the series universally. I did like another book slightly more, but I think overall in terms of like everyone who's read all of the books, I tend to find like the two most favorite books are the first one and this one. And it was great. So the fifth book is uh, Come Tumbling Down. We return to the world of Jack and Joe. So for this one, you need to read books one, three, five, and two. However, one, three, and five you need to read in that order. Two you can read at any point before five. And I do feel like it is important to read book two prior to jumping into book five. But as to where you decide to read it, it doesn't matter. If you're only wanting to read this particular storyline, I recommend, I think probably the best would either be one, then two, or two, one, and then three and five. But you could also read two prior to book five. I think in terms of like a logical story flow, if you're wanting to do chronological order, I would recommend two, one, three, five. Okay, I gave Come Tumbling Down three stars. The book felt a little too rushed. It did that thing that I don't like in books where decisions aren't necessarily final decisions. I felt like we followed too many people to really come attached to like any of the characters. I love the general overall message. And then the climax came way too quickly, which is something that I've noticed. Um, and in my opinion, three of the books in this series too far is that like the climax happens and then the book ends. Like there's no aftermath. And I wanted the aftermath in this particular book. And the last book currently published is Across the Green Grass Fields, which follows Reagan, who we have not met in any of the previous books yet. And we start when she's about six and we leave her when maybe she's maybe 15. And she is a lovely character. In my opinion, she probably has had the most character growth throughout the story of any of the characters. I loved following her. It's the world is a world full of horses, which doesn't sound like right up my alley. I'm not a huge like horse fan, but I absolutely love the Hufflins. I love the message of found family and accepting of people for who you are. I like that they explored like an intersex main character because they do kind of represent um, one to two percent of the world population and the difficulties that come from that for people who do grow up with being essentially intersex and even more so than that was just what being a true friend is and what that means and uh, there's also kind of an exploration into destiny versus self-manifestation 
I loved, I gave it four stars. The only reason I didn't give it five, because I did absolutely love this, was again, the thing that Shauna McGuire did in the last book was that the climax happened and then the book ended. And I'm like, I wanted to know the aftermath. Um, I, I felt like that was crucial to the story. It almost made it feel a little too short. But I am hoping that Shauna McGuire has a plan for us to return to the Hufflands because I would, I would really love to see that. And I would like to see Reagan get reunited with her little buddy. Um, it's my hope. I don't think it will happen, but that is my hope. And this is another standalone. You do not have to read any of the other books to read this. So books one, two, four, and six can be read as standalones. Book seven, if it's following the one that's being published in January, if it follows the general pattern that we've been seeing, you're gonna have to read one, three, five, and two. I'm thinking just th this book that we just read is gonna be important to seven because this is the first time that we've met a character who's not at the school outside of the first book. And so if she's gonna introduce a character to us before we see it and the timeline of like the school series and the school timeline, to me that's gonna be important of why we're meeting her beforehand. And so I'm thinking this is gonna be important for the seventh book. That's my prediction. If you've read the Way We're Children series, uh, let me know which one's your favorite. For me, Every Heart of Joy is obviously my favorite. And then my second favorite is Across the Green Grass Fields. And I will see y'all later. Bye y'all.